Welcome to Conversations with your host, Ron Bryant, who will engage in lively and informative dialogue with politicians, leaders, visiting celebrities, and individuals making a difference in the community fabric of Central Ohio. On this edition of Conversations, I'll be speaking to W. Curtis Stitt, President and CEO of the Central Ohio Transit Authority, or CODA. CODA is evolving as our public transit leader. Here's W. Curtis Stitt to tell us about that change. Well, Curtis, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your hectic schedule to sit down and talk with me and have this conversation. Truly appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Um, Getting right to it. The Board of Trustees recently voted to uh, maintain the fare structure for CODA, as well as uh, the CBUS free fares. That is a, a good word to the citizens of Columbus and all those individuals that, that ride CODA. Talk about that. Well, every three years we evaluate our fares and make determination of what's the appropriate fare for this time. And uh, over the last few weeks, our staff has been looking at fair structure, looking at some of the policies that the board has set for us in making the evaluation. And one of the things that the board did in 2009 is propose that we essentially look at um, how much our passengers pay for the service as a percentage of the overall costs of operating our operations. Yes. Uh, Also, uh, that same policy asked us to consider affordability and other factors uh, as we evaluate fares every three years. So we looked at all of those things. We had a special um, retreat with the board to talk about fares and other things. And uh, the board made it pretty clear that uh, because of our financial, uh, financial situation and other considerations that this was not the time to increase fares. Certainly, um, we looked at the amount that the uh, passengers pay as a percentage of our overall operating costs. And as a result of this change, we'll, we'll be paying, they'll be paying about 18% of our costs on a national average. The average is about 20%. And that's the target that our board set in 2009. And 18% isn't far off that target, especially when you consider that um, since 2006, our fares have increased by 60% between 2006 and 2012. Gotcha. And if we were to have made the 25 cents increase that um, we initially took out to the public, that would have um, meant we would have had an 80% increase in our fares in that's, uh, uh, between 2006 and 2014. So um, we decided not to change the fares there. Um, we also decided to decrease one small segment of our riding community's uh, fare and that's the folks who qualify for our mainstream service, service, door-to-door service for people with disabilities. Okay. And um, uh, we decided to decrease the amount of the fare that those people who qualify for that door-to-door service, when they are able to use our fixed route service and use it uh, between 2003 and 2011, we were charging nothing for that service. Correct. Uh, 2011, we increased that fare for those folks to $1. And the impact was this. The month that the board made the decision to increase the fare to $1 for that group of people with disabilities, that month we had 34,000 trips made by people with disabilities. January 2011, the ridership plummeted by 81%, the next year by 29%. Um, And this year, we project we'll finish the year with um, 35,000 trips for the year, not for the month, for For the the year. year. Yes. And and what it told me was that Mm, mm, mm. people with disabilities who were taking advantage of that free service were making discretionary trips the people who were riding the fixed route when the fare was free did not shift to riding the mainstream service for those trips. Right. Those trips would have cost them three fifty. What all of this tells us is that one dollar 
priced people out of making discretionary trips and it impacted their quality of life. So we made a quality of life decision yesterday, our board did, uh, to uh, reset the fares to where they were in 2011 for that group of, of folks. That's excellent. Shows your sensitivity and the board's sensitivity and of course, you know, the reality that a lot of people face. And we think it's the right thing to do. Also, the uh, extending of the free fares for CBUS. That's an interesting um, proposition. Uh, you know, this is a service that we view as helping this community to um, achieve its goals. One of the tenets of our strategic long range vision for CODA, uh, the first tenet is to make sure our goals here uh, help the broader community achieve its goals. CODA's goals cannot just be CODA's goals. We have to uh, recognize that we need to use the public resources uh, in an appropriate way to help move the goals, move the needle ahead for the goals of the broader community. And with all the effort in downtown to revitalize downtown as the uh, central business district to make it the, the hottest, newest, sexiest uh, neighborhood, residential neighborhood, and also to attract visitors, the question became, what's CODIS role in that? And we provide this amenity that help people to travel throughout this downtown area and just beyond into the it's shore. Working. And um, it's working partly because it's free. And we know from looking at what's happened in other communities where there's been a charge after being free the ridership plummeted, and eventually the service has to be That's discontinued. Incredible. So uh, we will continue our efforts to try to find a long-range, continuous funding source for it so that we can underwrite part of the cost of operation. More than a million Americans are living with HIV. But nearly two-thirds do not get the care they need to stay healthy. And transmissions from those not getting care account for 9 in 10 new HIV infections. Diagnosis and care can improve the lives of people with HIV and reduce the likelihood of transmitting the virus to others. A hundred people who don't know they have HIV transmit the virus to nearly seven new people each year. But that rate drops rapidly as people go through care. Every year, 100 people who have HIV under control through medication infect less than one. But today, just 30% have the virus under control, and 50,000 people become newly infected each year. Improving the health of people living with HIV today could prevent the vast majority of new infections tomorrow. I'm only 17. But I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family, the first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. Cleveland Avenue rapid transit uh, uh, potential for that is, is very high and I know you're moving forward with that. Just talk about what that means to the public and what that's all about for those that don't understand. The bus rapid transit uh, is a concept that, that really focuses on uh, using traditional buses uh, to provide faster service uh, on street um, that will make public transit more attractive to potential riders. Bus rapid transit uses a wide array of features that help to make the service operate faster. Uh, everything from uh, 
spacing the stops f further apart so you're not stopping every block or block Correct. and a half. Yes. Uh, to off-board fare collection, which we'll have at uh, some of our stations. To signal preemption, which means that uh, as a bus is approaching a red light, the red light might be truncated to allow the bus to continue to move. Or as, if it's approaching a green light that's about to turn red, it will extend the green light in order for the bus to continue uh, so that uh, it gives sort of priority That's to public phenomenal. transit phenomenal. Uh, and, and moving through uh, any particular corridor that the BRT happens to be operating in. Uh, on the upper register of the uh, options or amenities that uh, features of bus rapid transit uh, include things like um, dedicated lanes 24-7. Now, we are uh, on the lower range because we are taking an incremental step to introduce this new type of service to Columbus. Um, we're introducing bus rapid transit. We hope this, and, and we feel strongly that this service, once it's up and running, will be successful. And then we will move to implement bus rapid transit in other corridors with more and more of the features that will help us to move that was going to be my next question throughout the system yeah so so the cleveland avenue transit uh rapid transit system is more like a test it, you could call it that but it's certainly a bit more than a test because we're we're going to be investing and spending about 47 million dollars you don't test <laughs> with 47 million dollars true, true on, but, on, but but it is an introduction of something new to this community it's going on elsewhere Absolutely. around the country yes, and it's it proven to be successful it's new for us and and we're taking a, a, a small step in in the right direction and we hope that as this um, uh, proves to be successful we'll get more and more support locally for um, bus rapid transit and um, uh, it will demonstrate that uh, you don't always need to have a rail line to have a positive impact on economic development and um, in, uh, transportation improvements in your community. Cleveland Avenue versus High Street. Mm -hmm. It would be easier to do it on Cleveland Avenue. High would be a, just a, a little bit harder, even though a lot of folks would love to have the High Street connection north and south and then probably a broad street east and west. What is the potential for the a possibility of additional routes like that and maybe even night or overnight having the crisscross uh, north south east, east west uh, for for the bus system well for brt um, the possibilities are enormous i think though when you look at the specific streets or corridors in our community high or high street may not be the best one now in terms of ridership and the density it's a it's a great street but in terms of the space to provide all of the amenities and all of the options you can add with bus rapid transit, Broad Street would probably be a better street because of the space and the mm -hmm, width. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a reason why they call it Broad Street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but because of the width of Broad Street, you have the space to put dedicated lanes yes. and also accommodate regular vehicular traffic. Uh, you have the space to put uh, maybe center boarding or street side or curbside boarding stations um, while still allowing a smooth flow of the rest of the traffic. Uh, some places on High Street, that's a little bit more difficult. Beyond that, you're, you're, you're beyond my pay grade because uh, I'm only an amateur <laughs> transit planner and, uh, and our planning di division could give you details on, on, on how well BRT could work in any particular corridor in our community. Talk about the comparison of CODA to other systems in other like cities uh, that are close in size uh, in proximity to the movement. Uh, how does CODA rate? I think CODA is one of the best systems uh, of our size in the country. I think we've got um, the best looking vehicles in terms of the look of our fleet. Um, we have great goodwill as a result of that. I think we have great service. Uh, our ridership numbers uh, demonstrate that. Uh, I think we're going to be up so far year to date. We're up uh, in ridership two and a half percent and we're steadily increasing our ridership. We have um, plans in place like the BRT, like our transit system review where we're looking at our entire system and asking is the paradigm that we've been operating under for the last 40 years the right paradigm 
and our transit system review where we brought in consultants and experts in public transit planning uh, to take a look at our system and give us recommendations on how to improve it. Uh, uh, and uh, our board, by the way, just uh, passed a resolution to accept that consultant's report on the transit system review and we'll begin to incrementally implement that plan and that uh, will help us to um, meet our second tenet of our strategic long-range plan and that is to make certain that CODA is providing the most efficient and effective service we can with today's resources. So we are um, looking at how we can use the public resources uh, better than we have in the past and improve our system using today's resources. Uh, then finally, we are positioning ourselves to make sure that CODA moves forward into the future as this community grows. And that's the final tenet of our, uh, of our long range vision. And that is we are responsible today to plan for the next generation of public transportation for our community. If we aren't planning today, then 10 years from now, as the community grows and 20 years and 35 years from now, as this community will grow another, by another half million residents in the next 35 years, if we aren't planning today for the transportation system that that new growing community yes. um, will need, then when it's time to build it, we won't be able to build it. And when it's time to operate it, we'll be saying, boy, we wish we, we wish Curtis Stitt and his administration had done the planning. So we're gonna plan that system. And once again, we had a busy board meeting yesterday because our board yesterday also approved uh, a contract for um, the consultants who are gonna help us to guide this community through a process to plan the next generation of public transportation. That's so I fantastic. think when we compare ourselves to others, uh, we compare very well because we recognize our responsibility to use our resources to move the goals of the community because we recognize the need to maximize our efficiency and our effectiveness using our current service and because we're going to plan for the future today so that That's so that wonderful. we aren't playing catch up yes we are growing along with the community being a model transportation system you've received high marks for environmental performance talk about that well one of the big things we do in the area of environmental performance is um, we are you know, we made a decision about three years ago to con transition our bus fleet to natural gas yes and um, How's that conversion going? It's going, it's going smoothly. We um, are, it's not a conversion. I, I use the word transition. Transition. Because okay. we're not going to start converting vehicles from diesel vehicles to natural gas vehicles. We're not going to sell off all of our, our, our diesel vehicles right away because it's difficult to do and, and replace them immediately with um, natural gas vehicles. We're going to transition by attrition of our vehicles, when it's time to retire them, we're gonna replace the diesel vehicles with uh, natural gas vehicles. And um, um, I think the, the number was about a half million dollars that we saved last year yes. um, using natural gas versus um, uh, diesel. And each year that number's gonna grow because we're adding about 30 to 40 in that range, 30 to 40 vehicles each year to our system. Um, operated using natural gas as we retire the diesel vehicles. Now with, with that uh, environmental performance and, and the transition, uh, have you looked at uh, the potential for fuel cell uh, buses, uh, fuel cell and the hydrogen? Toyota just came out with the new fuel cell cars. Could that be a potential down the line? It'll be a potential down the line, much further down the line than my tenure will be here at CODA. I, I, I really think that for us, um, we've landed on a, a strong decision for natural gas. I think Cleveland has, uh, did an experiment or was looking to do an experiment or, or, or pilot with a couple of buses using uh, fuel cell technology. Uh, my position is that uh, we don't want to 
be the transit agency that's out there testing everything new on the market for the industry. Uh, we want to take advantage of uh, well-proven technology um, uh, that we can take advantage of uh, in, in our system in a, for our community that we know will uh, allow us to operate efficiently and more effectively for our community. Fuel cell is something that, um, as I say, Cleveland was going to run two buses just to, to test Just it. to test that, yeah. Uh, we don't want to spend our uh, resources um, doing those tests. We'll let the we'll we'll let the industry, others in the industry, test. Yeah. Uh, and 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 then we'll take advantage of what they prove to be effective. And that's uh, what's happened with natural gas. Since the Affordable Care Act was signed into law in 2010, 28 states plus DC have expanded Medicaid and millions have gained coverage through Medicaid or CHIP. Millions of young adults have gained coverage through their parents' plan. Americans saved $9 billion because insurance companies must spend at least 80 cents of every premium dollar on health care. 9.4 million seniors and people with disabilities saved more than 15 billion dollars on prescription drugs. Nearly $1,600 per beneficiary. Nearly 11.7 million Americans are signed up for coverage through the health insurance marketplace. The ACA has helped achieve an historic reduction in the uninsured. To date, 16.4 million uninsured people have gained health care coverage. The Affordable Care Act. Five years of providing access to affordable, quality health coverage. You recently held your ninth Rosa Parks Day uh, piece. Uh, in association with CODA and the office of uh, the Honorable Joyce Beatty, Congresswoman. Um, you've been doing it for nine years now, and it's just something that has just taken off. Uh, Congress has uh, recognized you, has recognized statewide as Rosa Parks Day. Just talk about the blessing of the Rosa Parks movement as it relates to CODA and why it was so important for CODA to take the lead in association with Joyce's office and, and others across the city to, to make this happen. Well, I think nobody would disagree with the statement that Rosa Parks made a tremendous contribution to our nation. Uh, it may not have been viewed that way when she did it, but history has proven that she did the right thing at the right time to make a difference uh, in our country. And certainly, um, when Joyce Beatty asked you to do something, um, you're going to do it. <laughs> you know <laughs> and that. she's going to see that you, you, you follow through. She doesn't ask you if she doesn't think you are capable and if she doesn't think you're going to be a good contribution to her team. So when she came to CODA uh, and said, hey, I'm introducing legislation to make Rosa Parks Day an annual day of recognition of Rosa Parks' contribution to our nation here in Ohio. Um, we couldn't help but say, we applaud you for doing that. Yes, yes. Then she took the next step and said, hey, we want to partner with CODA to 
do a statewide tribute to Rosa Parks. And um, there was no way we could say no to that. And over the last nine years, this statewide tribute to Rosa Parks has truly been an event that gives appropriate recognition and honor to a woman who sacrificed to make a contribution to her people and uh, in an ironic way by sitting down to take a stand. To take a stand, yes. So we continue to honor her. This is our 10th year that we'll be um, partnering with um, Joyce Beatty, the Ohio State University, and others who uh, tribute, give tribute to Rosa Parks and to make sure that people in this community, in our state, uh, recognize and remember her as the treasure, the national treasure yes. that she is. Mm -hmm. You also have a children's assembly. You also bring in the kids from around the city and uh, provide them with some historical background and understanding in association with CODA. Talk about those kids. We do that every year at the uh, Rife Center, right? Yes. Yes. You know, it's important for us to make sure that our young people, our children, uh, know their history. And um, so often, things like the thing that Rosa Parks did go taken for granted by many of the folks who were around and witnessed it and um, are never heard of by the next generations because um, we don't give it its proper due. Yes. So uh, education is important uh, and uh, educating children about our history is important. They so, need to know. And we, when we started this uh, Rosa Parks tribute, the first year we did it, we started with uh, a day at a school that CODA was partnering with at that time. We took our 1963 vintage bus. Right. Um, uh, that was from that era. Uh, and we went on a trip uh, with Joyce Beatty out to the school and uh, reminded children, taught them about uh, the contribution that Rosa Parks made. And it's an important part of the statewide tribute to make sure that gener for generations to come, children will know that this is important and significant. And uh, we won't forget that part of our history. Um, just give us some final words for our viewers as it relates to CODA and um, you know what you're doing for the city and uh, coax them on. I know you take rides on the bus from time to time and uh, ride with the uh, passengers that uh, are moving in and out of the city. Mm -hmm. I know that's uh, you know one of the things that you enjoy doing. Just talk about that as we uh, get those final words in. Well, it's important for, for me to ride um, for a lot of reasons, but one of the major reasons is if I don't ride, if our other employees don't ride, we miss the opportunity to get the best information about our service and how we can improve our service. The people who ride our buses every day know the strengths and weaknesses of our service. And if we don't go out and ride with them from time to time, if not regularly, we miss the opportunity to have the best input on how to plan to improve our service for this community. So that's why it's important to ride. Uh, overall, I think CODA is well positioned. Uh, we talk about the fact that we want to plan for the future and today we are making major steps forward, but we're also sort of compressing this spring, if you will, so that we can make a giant leap forward. Mm -hmm. Because I see this community making giant leaps forward in its planning and giant leaps forward in things that are happening day to day. CODA has got to position itself, and I think we are positioning ourselves to make those steps forward with this community. And public transit is going to be one of the stellar parts of the growth of this community. And we look forward to um, the future of public transportation. 
for the next generation of Columbus and Central Ohio. Excellent. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.